I think I'm probably somewhat different from most uh, neuroscientists and most Nobel laureates. I started thinking about neuroscience at a time when it really didn't exist, uh, back in the 1960s when I was working as a, an aeronautical engineer. I began to think about the problems of philosophy. I read a lot in philosophy and psychology. And so it dawned on me that some of these problems, which were really important problems, the meaning of life, the, uh, uh, where, where we find ourselves in the universe, consciousness um, and motivation and, and things like this, um, that they might be solvable or at least addressable if we knew a lot more about how the brain worked. And at that time, we really didn't know very much about how the brain worked. So I made a very important life choice. I stopped being an engineer. I went back to school. I studied psychology and philosophy and a lot of other things, which I won't go into. And I think I, uh, I slowly began to realize that I was probably correct. And uh, over the years, I've developed techniques that allow us to record from cells in animal brains. And we approach it from that point of view. I'm really interested in the problems which relate back to philosophical problems. And for example, my major area of study has been the, uh, the way in which the brain um, form, formulates and, and, and uh, creates a concept of space. Is there really space out there in the real world? Or is it something we create uh, in our minds? And now we're pretty sure that uh, we can see this, these spatial cells in the hippocampus, part of the brain, uh, which are creating the concept of space, and they enable animals to navigate from one place to another. So I'm very happy that we've been able to actually, at least in one area of philosophy, carry out and, 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 and really make some progress in answering a philosophical question that's been there for a long time.